Who knows? I may be wrong. I don't wear clothes outside, so... Hey everyone, it's T. So I've been thinking about this for a long time, but like, anime clothes are like a thing you can wear now, which is just like incredible to me. I don't want to be one of those people, but like, back, back in my day, I couldn't wear anime clothes without me being like dragged. And I just started to notice that like licensed anime merch is being sold in they have high fashion anime inspired pieces like it's just not something that my wee part ever thought would be possible honestly so i thought why not you know explore a little so when i was like severely into anime which was like i don't know 2006 to 2012 maybe it wasn't possible to get anime inspired clothes in the us not to say that it wasn't possible it just wasn't easy, it wasn't accessible, I would have to go to Yahoo Japan Auctions, which is like, it's basically eBay in Japan, and search in Japanese the name of the anime in order to find the merch that people were reselling from there, and then have a shopping service send it here. I would have to go to Yahoo Japan Auctions and type in Seira Moon, yes. And then find something from here. They have a lot of figures. I should really get back on this. I want some, it doesn't matter. I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. And then I would be able to find stuff like this. This is actually really cute. Just like merch with, a lot of it wasn't even official, with like stuff that I liked on it. Naruto, Death Note, that kind of thing. But that's not accessible at all to do especially for a teenager like like this is thirty dollars or this is 35 us dollars plus shipping could be this is a sweatshirt so anywhere from 20 to 50 dollars just for the sweatshirt honestly not accessible so i guess my point in saying all this is that like at a certain point this stuff started becoming accessible to the modern us customer and i can't really pinpoint when that was like that was the most mainstream kind of thing that you could get at that point in time was a random like Sailor Moon kind of thing if they collabed with someone or maybe like Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty was extremely accessible, especially in the 2000s, 90s is when that started, I guess, in the US. But yeah, it seems like I fell out of like seeking this stuff out and all of a sudden it was like such and such brand is like offering a collab such and such brand is doing this and doing that for example when i was a teen teen hot topic i don't know it wasn't doing all of the anime and disney collabs that it's doing now like it was a lot of like trip pants and i don't know emo stuff which was of course popular at the time but a lot of the people that I knew that liked that stuff also liked anime. When you went into the lunchroom and you saw like the weird emo kids that I desperately wanted to be a part of, most of the time they like did the Naruto run or like talked about the cons that they went to on the weekends. Like like here, even they have an anime section on at Hot Topic. This was not a thing 10 years ago. It wasn't. And of course this is like popular anime, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm out of the loop. But like, of course, it's like My Hero Academia and Sailor Moon and Avatar is here. Death Note was here. I would have died if this was available for me as a teen. I, I would have gone broke, honestly. I, this would have been my wardrobe. Oh, that's cute. But yeah, I'm really happy that this kind of stuff has become accessible to people, especially teenagers, like, you know, when you're trying to express yourself and when you can't, it's like so frustrating. A lot of this stuff is like relatively affordable and that's the point, right? I think I noticed like these things coming into style and into fashion when, and this is very like, closed in of me, but like our local mall got a Uniqlo. Uniqlo is like a Japanese store. They sell a lot of basics last couple of years, 
Opened a bunch of stores within the US, had a lot of staple pieces, but the things that I really liked about them is that they sold a lot of like stealth anime merch. Like I'm wearing one of their shirts right now and it's like not stealth. It's still very like simplistic, minimalist, I guess, but they released like this, they did like a Sailor Moon collaboration which I really wanted this shirt, I really did. They've done stuff for like Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. Like, if you look at this, this is very stealth weeb. Like, or like these Naruto shirts. I actually was very tempted by these, but only because like when I was younger, I wouldn't have been able to get this. And you know, <laughs> my point being that like, not only do they have like the one side of the coin, which is like, this loud, very obvious anime merch, you know, like this, but they also have like this kind of stuff. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's not really considered niche anymore, and that might have started, I don't know, when anime started becoming like kind of more mainstream. Companies knew that they could make a buck off of it, but I also do like the kind of I guess variety, diversity in that, because it's not just being like shown or advertised to the normal consumer who like would like to spend anywhere from 10 to $30 on a t-shirt. It's also like being put in high fashion or more expensive things like sneakers. For example, Adidas made this drop which was uh, kind of crazy. I actually know someone who has the Frieza shoes. To me, this would be considered past mainstream even. Like there's a certain amount of prestige, I think, in saying that you have a collectible shoe from such and such anime. Maybe even if we're going outside of fashion, you could say like the Colourpop Sailor Moon collab or the Animal Crossing one. Also, I, I just remembered. This, when I saw it, I was like, this is insane. They even have the Misty Shorts. I'm pretty sure that it has to be sold out. Well, they even have the Misty Shorts, which is like, it's not even like, you can cosplay as Misty is basically what they're saying. They're just a pair of shorts. There's n there's nothing about else about them except they're like mom shorts. There's a, there's a beanie with ears. This is very loud and like in between, I would think like, something like Hot Topic and something like high fashion. This is what, 150 for a pair of jeans? And obviously like these are, this is like gen one, I think. So they're trying to kind of capitalize on the nostalgia for like people who can actually afford to buy this, AKA, you know, probably millennials, um, people over 24 whatever, who can afford to drop $150 on a pair of jeans. So there's also that aspect to it. I know that like nostalgia is a big thing now that companies use to like sell us things. I'm not affiliated with any of this, by the way. <laughs> I just didn't know this was a thing. I knew about the Misty shorts, that's all. But yeah, even this could be like your stealth weeb clothes, like this creepy mannequin leg leg thing situation. It's actually pretty nice. Uh, I would buy that secondhand. <laughs> but yeah, back in my day, back in my, back in my day, back in my day, back in my day, I would have to like find a pair of jeans and like chop them, find like a random yellow shirt, probably cut the arms off, a random pair of, what are these, suspenders? And then I could be misty, like, the fact that they're kind of offering the whole outfit is just deeply wild to me. I was watching Quicken's video on Bueve, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, the high fashion brand who had a collaboration with Ghibli, which is kind of wild. I saw um, Hosok from BTS was wearing one of their sweaters and I was like, this is crazy. But I feel like stuff like this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't past the point of mainstream, if there wasn't like some kind of prestige attached to it. And in my opinion, this stuff is kind of ugly, but regardless of my own personal aesthetics, the fact that it's out there and available for, for, for people to buy and like 
for influencers and celebrities to like wear and for people to think, oh my gosh, this is cool, is very, is not something that I thought would ever happen when I was like really big into anime. Like I didn't want anyone to know that I was into anime because you would get bullied. And for that reason, I think that it's really a good thing, you know, capitalism and consumerism aside. I do like that it's really broken into the mainstream as like, this is fine, you know? Wear what you want, that kind of thing. Who knows, I may be wrong. Like, this stuff would have made 13 year old me extremely happy. In that respect, I think it's a good thing. Let me know when you first started to notice like anime clothes being a big thing. I think there's also an intersection between like independent artists making merch from anime and you know consumers buying that and big brands taking notice of that. I didn't really want to go into independent artists because that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, let me know like what you personally have noticed as far as like that's concerned. Would you wear this stuff? <laughs> Would you not? It's fine if you don't want to. It's fine if you're not interested. If you don't watch anime and you watch this entire thing, thanks. Um, <laughs> you didn't have to. I appreciate it though. If you like this video, make sure to like it. Subscribe if you want. Comment if you feel like it. <laughs> Catch you next time. Thanks.